Honey, the honeymoon is over. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? Listen, we are reviewing Married at First Sight, Season 9, Episode Number 6, Real Life, Real Wife, okay? So, um, last day in Antigua, well, they see us, we see them get on the plane and they leave. Um, a few things that we do know right off top. Uh, is number one, the honeymoon's over. They are on day nine of their marriage and are on their way back to Charlotte, North Carolina. In addition, this season, they are all living in a neutral space, which I totally agree with. It is hard to move into someone's space. Um, so I think that this is good, especially for them starting out, that they go into a neutral space. Not only are they in a neutral space, but all of the other couples live in this particular building too. So I'm all here for that, okay? I mean, I made mention to it last time when I talked about, I think it was Deanna and Greg when they were gonna move in together. Um, and I, to I talked about moving into someone else's space. Well, let's go uh, couple by couple. And I'm gonna just tell you, Deanna and Greg are fastly becoming my favorite couple. Um, I'm really hopeful for them. So let's not start with them, okay? Let's start with uh, Jamie and Liz. So let me just start off by saying this. Um, from my understanding, there's a letter going around from the ex-fiance. Uh, I haven't read the letter. If you have read the letter, uh, let me know down below in the comments. So actually, to hear more about this letter from the ex-fiance, you can actually go on over to a fellow content creator's uh, channel, Janice Hilton. Um, she commented last week. I don't know if she'll comment this week, but go check her out. She did do a little segment on the letter, which I have in my watch list. So I can't give you much information because I don't know nothing, but y'all the show give me the tea, okay? Get me up in the know. Thank you very much. When they get off the plane, the first thing they do is they go to one or the other's homes. And we go and we visit Jamie's house or apartment before we go to Liz's apartment. And I'm actually thinking maybe that ex-girlfriend was, ex-fiance was delusional and they weren't really even in a relationship. Like, not that kind. Okay, I digress. Y'all will tell me about it. Uh, everything has a place. Everything is neat and in order. It is like walking into... Um, Ikea or a showroom it is so perfect where everything is lined up perfectly glasses uh, uh, the 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 um, guitars all the utensils you open the refrigerator and it's like it's staged pretty much as if you were going into a house tour for home buying like it looks staged and it is that pristine and that perfect. I mean, everything has a place. You definitely can see where he might be a little anal or just have a, a, um obsession compulsive disorder. Like, one or the other, which one is it? <laughs> we'll know soon enough. They already said, his, his family had already said he had some sort of OCD because everything is so, like, immaculate. I was like, oh, I'm thinking to myself, I couldn't be married to Jane, honey, because everything don't have its place. Shit be everywhere. He probably like uh, sleeping with the enemy and the labels are forward on all of the canned goods in the cabinet. Did y'all see that or not? I just, I, I didn't see that, but that's how I envision him. He's so neat. He also has a cat and so I'd be out because I'm allergic to cats. I don't like cats. In addition, I'm allergic to them. So yeah, I'd be like, I guess that's things that they probably ask just to make sure um, you know, there wasn't any issues, but really, is a cat going to stop you from being in, in love and going forward? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Okay, so then the next day we visit Liz's house, and it's very eclectic, very eccentric, very her attitude, very, you know, uh, wiry, and like there's no consistency. It's clean, but it's not like...
neat like it's clean you know it, you know it's put together in her style like he made a comment like nothing matches nothing goes together because that's not her style she has so much energy and that is exactly how her house is as well every time i look at liz i always want to be like stand up okay if you're first time visiting me i don't call liz elizabeth or beth i call her liz or lizzie because i think Elizabeth is too long and Beth is just doesn't fit her to me. Okay, I got my nerves like I know her. Well, Pastor Cal comes for a visit. He actually visits all the couples to see how they're going and how their, you know, initial time together was. Now, I was really glad to hear uh, Liz say that they had communication issues. Uh, or was that Jamie? Whichever it was, I'm glad that it was brought up and it was discussed. And I really feel like Jamie is the voice of reason in their relationship like he is the calm where she's the storm right actually discuss what their issues were and i love the advice that dr cal gave them or pastor cal gave them one of which being you know what whatever your issue is take the object out whatever the issue is make it objective right and discuss whatever the issue is and not have your anger go, go towards one another and i thought that was very sound advice and it's actually very hard for us to do so because of that he also said i want you guys to play a game called naked moments and i want you to be vulnerable with one another and at this particular moment when you have an issue that you stop everything that you're doing no tv no phones no distractions just your full attention on on each other so that you can express how you feel about what's going on and i really thought that's really a good idea because when you're arguing and nobody hears anything you got all these distractions going on so i really loved the fact that he was like cut out all the noise and focus directly on your partner so that you have a better outcome. Pastor Cal was like they need to be able to successfully communicate and resolve each argument and learn from them because it's okay to have an argument but don't hold on to it talk about it move forward you know and I just really feel like we need to hear that more often people need to be told that more often in your house and when you were growing up is that something that you learned that is not something that I learned um at all I actually am my mother's child I try not to be her but I am and so I'm going to start practicing pulling out the object but the other person has to also be willing to practice it and it's just not in like an intimate relationship but across all relationships wouldn't you agree um oh i failed to real i failed to mention that lizzie has two dogs that are all over the place and so on moving day uh you can see that jamie is visibly uncomfortable with the dog First off, I'm all like, dogs can't be on my bed. And I know y'all gonna be mad. I got a cousin that loves her little dog. I love her little dog. But listen, you can't be up on my bed. Okay? That's number one. Then I was with Jamie like, okay, why is a dog drinking out the cup? What's that about? Uh, couldn't you have gotten, where is his bowl? Didn't y'all pull them bowls out? Like, I don't think that the two should meet. Like, they shouldn't mix. The pets have their stuff and I have mine. There is no intermingling. But again, it's the whole fur mom, fur baby kind of thing. Now, one thing that made me like Lizzie, even if they don't work out, is that baby, she saged that whole house, honey, and saged it correctly. Saged him and was like, I hope you don't think I'm weird. But what I love is that he was like, I love that about her, that you don't know which way she's coming from is it left or is it right she saged the house and i thought it was like oh my god he didn't feel like it was witchcraft he didn't feel awkward he wasn't like what you doing like he was open to it and so i was like come through jamie maybe they'll work out i'm still not too sure about them but i was really glad to see um he was receptive of her quirks and so when it was time for sexy time right before there the dogs is on the bed and i was thinking to myself now who how are you gonna have intimate relations with the dogs on the bed but fortunately lizzie was like you gotta get out babies because mommy and daddy want to have sexy time so i was like who thank god because honey i don't know what 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 i know like they in the way i might want to cuddle for five seconds because i'm not a cuddler i don't like nobody else. i don't like nobody on me let us talk about amber and matt 
when they get back to Charlotte, we see that, of course, uh, Matt doesn't really have a place to stay. He just came back to Charlotte, so he's staying at a friend's father's home, um, which is very gracious, but also felt very weird to me. I know that he is, uh, what was the word they were using? Transient. However, I just was uncomfortable. Like, you don't really get to see who he is. So, not only did we not get to see who his family was, but we don't get to see who he is and how he lives. Um, so for that, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking like, oh, this don't seem good. This is a recipe for disaster. Like, I don't know anything about you except for what you tell me. And your friends, of course, are always going to ride with you. So I'm not really sure, or at least make sure I see the best parts of you. So I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, okay? Anybody agree with me? Let me know down below in the comments. So during this time, of course, you know, Amber's concerned about his minimalistic life, his transient life, how he, he's able to just pick up and leave. And of course, she has abandonment issues. So I'm, I'm looking like now, why, tell me why again, experts y'all chose them because you knew she had abandonment issues and you, but he, you also know that he wants to be a, f a family man based on and wants to make, grow some roots where he is. So I can see where you might've done that, but did you consider that quite possibly he could up and leave in an instant and she would feel some kind of way. Uh, did you guys give them any kind of counseling, individual counseling before this? Does anybody know? Let me know down below in the comments. So when we go to Amber's house, it's like a little mini house. <laughs> he can't fit in the house. It's probably like an average, regular size apartment, but he looks like a giant in it, okay? Knocking down curtain rods and everything. Well, when Pastor Calvin comes to visit with them, uh, he uses a different approach and talks to them individually, one-on-one, -on -one, to really kind of, or at least that's what we see. I don't know if they did that for the other couples, but they showed us for this particular couple so that they could address whatever concerns that they have separately. The whole time I was thinking, I was hoping that she would address the family issues that she would have, that she had, but as well as the possibility of him taking a contract and going overseas. So she did talk about being able to uproot and move in an instant. Like he has so little stuff that it doesn't take anything for him to just uproot himself and go somewhere else. Um, you could see too all in her, in, in her body language. She was nervous. She was anxious because she was so fidgety. Fidgeting with that ring. Fidgeting with her hair. She was like really girlish. You know what I mean? Like. I mean, and granted, I don't think she's 30 yet, right? So, real, real fidgety, real uncomfortable about talking about how she felt. So, I'm really hoping they, they kind of work through those things. For Matt, it was more of him not wanting to disappoint her. Um, wanting to make sure he was exactly where she needed to be. He did end up... Uh, Pastor Cal ended up letting them know that, you know, they both have the same concern. So I did like that Dr. Cal talked about, he asked each couple about finances and do you know, have you guys talked about it? I don't remember him talking about it with Liz and, ja and Jamie, but he did discuss it here and it brought up the whole support issue. And so Dr. Cal pretty much was like, you know what, you got to get rid of the machismo. I understand because I'm sure Dr. Cal understands the you know, a man is normally a provider. You got God, man, you know, woman, child. I'm sure he definitely gets it. But he was like, if she's willing to support you, that is what this is about. Having a, a spouse, a wife, is more than just companionship. It's someone who's there to support you. And so he did open his eyes up a little bit more about what the possibilities of Amber being of some assistance while he's trying to get his mobile detailing business off the ground now listen i'm still i'm still with um <laughs> with matt on this let me just l allow amber a moment to figure him out because i don't know enough about him and i'm leery about him helping her and him just running off and leaving her holding holding the bills from the bag that she used on him I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way about it. And I might be overreacting. I'm actually feeling like this is one couple that's not going to make it. They're not going to make it. I don't have a good vibe, a good feeling from them. Like, it's just like they really needed something different. They're like, more like boyfriend and girlfriend who just happened to move in with one another. You know, I do like the way they communicate with one another though. Specifically on move-in day, Matt 
utilize the second bedroom bathroom and Amber was taken aback by it she felt like okay what you don't want to be around me what's happening are we roommates that's what you do with your roommates that's not what you do when you're in a marriage and I kind of felt could see both ways number one both of you are used to your space alone right but number one i was thinking well because he has lived with women before he knows that a woman will take up all the space in the bathroom and maybe him having his own space and not having to deal with hair and blow dryers and curlers and you know makeup and all that stuff maybe that was his way of you know being accommodating which is what he stated but i also see her point where well we're married now why would you want to be away from me Okay, girl, listen, 30 minutes in the bathroom away from you is not going to hurt you. And you are going to appreciate your private bathroom time. Okay, listen, I'm just here to tell you I don't like sharing no bathroom with no man. <laughs> yeah, I, if we could have separate bathrooms, I'm all for it, okay? Um, I like the whole double sink thing, but they don't have that. They have one sink that they have to share. So... I wanted to know, do you think that she was being extreme? How do you feel about her saying, oh, why do you want to be in there? It's part of her abandonment issues. They keep coming up. That's like I'm going to ask this if they have individual counseling. They really should be having like a month or two of individual counseling before they even match them up with somebody. I know they talked and did background checks, but if you know for sure, let me know down below in the comments. First night, I'm, I'm listening to him chew, and I'm like, okay, I'm irritated. He's chewing those damn chips too loud. Is his mouth open? Child, it is definitely a pet peeve if he's chewing with his mouth open. I can't. I will not. Listen, I want a divorce. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Um, But I do like, like I said, how, the way that they communicate. Because at this point, she says, maybe I overreacted, and this is why. Because my mother left when I was nine, I feel like the moment somebody goes away, it feels like they're going to leave me. Um, and he's all like, the bathroom is just down the hall. <laughs> like, it's not 900 miles away. And I really feel like she really needs to address her abandonment issues. It is a huge part of her life. And that is probably why she's so clingy and gives up all her money to the men that she dates. But he was, again, very understanding of her circumstances and why she felt that way. But I could see if this is going to be a recurring theme and this is the thing you're going to fall back on, like we see in the um, next week's episode when she's crying or whatever that is, it's like she feels like she's been abandoned again. It's a whole lot, but we need to see it. I can't make no speculation, but I'm feeling like that. If this is going to be a recurring theme, then she definitely needs to go seek some therapy. Funny thing is, I want to do Iris and Keith before I want to do Deanna and Greg. How about that? So, uh, we go to Keith's house first. Because uh, they were tired. They came in. They just wanted to go to sleep and clap, crash. Let's not go look at the house. Let's not go pack no bag. Let's just go to sleep. So, that's what they did. Um, when they woke up in the morning, there were uh, piles and piles of clean clothes on her side of the bed where she would be, where she would normally sleep. And she was, you know, be given a judging, disapproving eye. And I was like, listen, I don't like to fold no clothes either. Like, I'll wash, I'll dry, but I hate, hate folding clothes. It's like, oh, it's like my arch nemesis, that and mopping the kitchen floor. And maybe clean the oven. Okay, listen. I need, I need, I need someone who really wants to fold clothes, and I need to get me someone a Consuela, maybe a Leticia, maybe a Becky. You know, some white young girl who could come clean up this house. My house isn't dirty, but you get my point. Like some stuff I don't want to do. I don't like cleaning a refrigerator. I don't. When did this get about me? Okay, okay, okay. Never mind. So when they wake up. Iris is ready to explore. She wants to look in the kitchen, in the cabinets, in the refrigerator, in all the drawers. Where is your underwear? What's in this? What's in that? Like, she's got lots of questions. And the good thing about Keith, he is definitely patient. He kind of chucks it up to being, my wife is curious and uh, nosy. Okay, that's not what he said. But my wife is curious and he understands that she wants to see very inquisitive, wants to know what's happening. But as she's snooping around, she goes into the side table of the bed and she sees a big ass box of empty condoms. You hear me when I say empty? Not a one in the box. And uh, 
she seems to be in a quandary. She feels some kind of way about it. I want to know how you, how you would feel. Let me just say this. And we're going to play devil's advocate on both sides. I've only known you for nine days. Number one, you should be glad that he is using a condom, okay? And that the condoms have been used. That means he is being safe. He's practicing safe sex, okay? Number two, though, on her side, uh, you use this whole box of condoms that are on the side of your bed. The question is, we've only been married nine days. Who have you been sleeping with consistently that you would use all these condoms? Is it a bunch of different random girls? Or is it... Uh, just you know one girl that comes over and spends the night you know what which is it and then i'm thinking for that poor girl she watching this thing and this motherfucker and lost his mind he been fucking me all this time and i wasn't good enough he went to marry at first sight anyway so i'm gonna err on the side of i'm glad that he was safe because before me and anything he's done before me doesn't affect me okay i'm glad you were safe now we are married. You don't you you don't necessarily need a big box of condoms. He did say that there were a few in his bag that he took with him, which is great. Though you're my wife, I don't really know much about you, so we gonna use a condom because I don't want to get us pregnant and I don't want no diseases. Even though I know you a virgin, I don't want no diseases. And so she um, says some shit like, "Well, I really would have liked for the condom to be used on me." He was like, "Really? Yeah, I'm looking like really because you're a virgin." And uh, at least that's what you're saying, right? You're a virgin. Never your your cherry hasn't been popped in that sense. So I'm looking like, mm, I don't know. Anyway, so I really think she kind of overreacted, but I'm glad that they had a conversation and that she was like, yeah, we're going to move on from it, that it didn't hinder anything between the two of them. But she was taking it back, rightfully so, if her thought process was anything like mine would have been. However, I would have said, okay, that was pre-me. That's in the past. That has nothing to do with me. It is what it is. When I was looking at his house, I was thinking to myself, his house is definitely a bachelor pad. It is made for a man. A man lives there. It has a man's touch. There is no no female anything in that house so she don't have to really worry about if he was in a relationship or not because if he was we would have brought over a vase or two or something to put some pop of color on that chocolate brown couch i'm just saying pastor calvin comes to visit when they're at iris's house and iris's house is immaculate looks like a house that a single woman lives in um like if I didn't have any children, my house would probably look like Iris's, okay? She's a bit on the extreme side to me though. Just a little bit, I'll tell you why. So when Pastor Cal comes to visit, comes to visit, Iris is super excited. They both uh, say how that the how the experts got it right and that they seem to be a good match and things are going well. She immediately talks about that damn ring, him losing the ring. Like, is that really important? Is that really high up on the totem pole for you? Like that shouldn't be a big deal. A ring could be replaced. As long as his heart is with you and he's invested and dedicated to your marriage, I think that's the last thing you should worry about, especially if he's willing to go get another ring quickly. Um, but I thought that was like a little petty and I really feel like Dr. Cal, Dr. Cal, I want to keep wanting to call him a doctor, Pastor Cal, also felt it was a little petty and unnecessary but they didn't really talk about that what they did talk about was their intimacy and if um how the role as a virgin as a virgin how the elephant in the room had affected their relationship and keith cool as a cucumber what did he say i'm gonna be patient with her and that he is willing to wait however long she wants and i'm thinking to myself that's not realistic for a man who went through a whole box of condoms okay like it looked like it was a 20 24 pack of condoms that doesn't seem realistic um well maybe he'll wait but he'll be having a chick on the side sure you got a chick i know you got a chick on the side i would hope not though but um how long is too long now granted it's fine right now they've only been married for nine days but I'm feeling like by the time the eight weeks has come, she should have felt comfortable enough, especially if she feels like they're going to be together forever. Husband, that shit is getting on my nerves. Husband, my husband is getting on my nerves. On my last nerve. Hubby, girl, knock it the fuck off. Call him Keith, babe, something else. Y'all, somebody help me understand. Am I tripping? Anyway, 
I feel like if they feel like they're really going to be together, then by the eight weeks, by the time the eight weeks is up, his hand should have went in the cookie jar, okay? He should have got some good cookies and maybe a little milk. Dip the cookies in the milk, okay? Something. Anyway, he did also talk about the living arrangements and the domestic responsibilities. Keith can't cook. Iris is already taking on the responsibility of cooking dinner all the time because it's one of the things that she is most looking forward to. Girl, that shit get played out. You're going to be tired of cooking. Um, and the responsibility of adding the dishes and whatnot. He's going to take on some of the cleaning, but it seems like they're real traditional. We know that their house is going to be ran in a traditional fashion. So let's see how that works out. They, he also said, have you talked finances? And it's something that they haven't. It's uh, idealism versus realism. Let's, let's really get down to the nitty gritty. You have two incomes that are coming together. You're going to be in one house. You better talk finances. Finances is probably higher up on my totem pole now to talk than ever before. Uh, it used to be like, you know, dedication and passion and all that shit. No, finances is way up here now, okay? After being married, I, um, you know, if you don't know, I did lose my husband in 2015, so I didn't get a divorce, but God decided th that he had other plans for him. Um, nonetheless, so I feel like finances are really high up and it's something that we need to discuss. Finances, credit, future, retirement. You know, that's not everything, but it is a huge factor in a marriage. Infidelity and finances are two things that will cause a marriage to break up. So they definitely need to talk about that quickly. Uh, and then I, there was something, uh, Pastor Cal said something about Keith is no longer a stranger. No, nah, nigga, he's still a stranger. Okay, he's my husband, but I don't know this man. Yes, I spent nine days with him. Yes, that's great and everything, but I don't know him. He's still a stranger. I don't care how much background checks y'all done, done. To me, he's still a stranger, but he's a stranger in my bed. Bedroom, bedroom, whatever. Uh, they still are getting to know each other. So her apprehension on sharing her finances with him and talking about that... <laughs> Are valid they just need to really right now probably talk about how it's gonna look in the future and divvy up what is going to be paid by whom I don't know if y'all agree with me let me know down below if you don't let me know that too she did have some quirks that I was like girl this is too much like she had double sinks one is for washing your hands and one is for washing your face now I get the whole sitting on the bed too close to the pillows with your dirty clothes and your butt and all that I get all that a lot of people do that um, I'm not one of those people, so I get all that. But that whole bathroom thing um, was a lot, uh, as well as, you know, her side-eyeing him because he didn't want no liners. Like, I like liners in my in my drawers, especially if I'm not the first one using them, which is the in this instance. So, um, I'm with the whole liners in the drawer thing. But normally, you buy your stuff and you wipe it out and you can put your stuff in there. She seems a little extreme, a little a, a little too much with that. Um, okay, so he had said something about, she was like, he was like, where do you want to sleep? And she said, in the inside, because a man is supposed to sleep on the outside in case a burglar comes in. Now listen, he was like, I ain't never heard of that. You made that up. Have you ever heard of that before? I have. I have. So, um, what? You gonna climb over her if the burglar comes in? You gonna be able to get there quicker? Y'all, let me know how you feel about that. The only way I would say uh, a man is gonna sleep on the inside is if you've moved in with me and I'm already on the outside because I've been the protector of the home. I'm comfortable. This is where I'm gonna sleep. Then I see it being an issue. But even then, if they want to sleep there, I will make the adjustment. Y'all, let me know what you think about that. Is that something you've ever heard of? Is that something that happens in your house, uh, with, in your marriage or your relationship? I want to know because I'm nosy. Let's talk about Deanna and Greg. Yes, they are fast, fast, very fastly becoming uh, one of my favorites. So right now, it is, it is Chris. Goodness. Right now, it is Iris and Keith, and that's how come I got Chris. I combined their names, I guess. Um, Deanna and Greg, then Jamie and Lizzie, and then Matt and Amber as it relates to who's my favorite. They go to Deanna's townhouse first, and honey, you, should, you saw Greg's face. It was not, uh, it wasn't messy, but it wasn't well organized either, right? 
he met Sandy who is skittish and doesn't like men and she's all like let me help let me introduce you to Sandy let me try and get you acclimated to Sandy because she don't like men but it seems like by the end Sandy likes Greg and really gonna like Greg and probably gonna prefer Greg over Deanna y'all know that's how it works right uh what I did notice is that Greg was overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that Deanna has acquired over the years in her townhouse specifically in her bathroom it was a lot of stuff she is going to need to probably get rid of some stuff donate some stuff sell some stuff I don't know because it is a bit much it was a bit overwhelming for me okay the ghetto bird is getting on my nerves when we go to Greg's house Deanna was extremely pleased at the uh, layout of the house how immaculate it was how upscale it was like you definitely got to see what type of man Greg really was based on how he lived right you know that he might be shy and timid but you also know he's about his business and he likes nice things and he likes his things to be nice and clean and one of the things she said was uh four bedrooms three bathrooms and it's just Greg how am I gonna clean this how do you keep this place clean um, but what I know is that she realizes she has hit the jackpot, okay? Um, in addition, though, I'm just waiting on her to have the realization, or at least out loud, that this was initially for you and your other, your other, your, your ex-fiance, your other boo. Like, I'm waiting on her to have that epiphany. Is she going to have it, or is she just going to let it fly? I know I would let it fly. I might say something, but I would let it fly and be like, let's put my touch all over the place. So when Dr. Cal goes and visits them, he says, welcome to married life. And there's crickets, like silence. Like, it's like a processional. Nobody says anything because they're both very much introverts, right? They're both very much shy um, and only kind of speak when they know what they're talking about. That's how, that's the, the vibe I'm getting from the two of them. But uh, true to form, Greg dotes on Deanna and says how he made amazing how amazing she is and what you know a great woman she is and how they how they are going to do well and then she joins in and she starts talking about uh where i'm strong and he's weak and vice versa we complement one another and we'll be able to build our strengths together and so i feel like that's a plus like i was glad to see that I was glad to see on moving day that Deanna seemed very optimistic. She started feeling a little more at ease, especially after Dr. Calvin said to, to her, listen, I understand that it's been a long time, but when we go to the new place, make sure every day you do something that is intimate, something that brings you closer because it is definitely a problem for Greg. It was vocalized in their session. And it was understood why because she had been by herself and it's been 10 years and though it's like riding a bike it is very scary to get back on that ride am i gonna get hurt am i gonna fall am i gonna scrape my knee am i gonna bust my head open if i fall off this bike like that is the feeling that you get um because she's so apprehensive and so i'm glad that he gave her the homework of every day try and do something intimate whether it's a hold a hand or a kiss or something because you know shit greg's looking like uh yeah i'm attracted to her and i'm ready okay 10 years i'm ready shit she should be ready too <laughs> now while they were talking about physical intimacy diana brings up the fact that you know, they had an issue and it was too many compliments. I was so glad to see Pastor Cal tell her that's really unusual and that people wish they had all those compliments. Like, did we not say that these last couple episodes? Like, didn't we not say, especially me, I don't know about y'all, some of y'all was in disagreement, that it is unusual for you to turn down compliments but we also determined that it was because she wasn't used to it it had been a long time she had some insecurities whoever that last boyfriend was really kind of jacked her up because it left her not wanting to try love again so but he did tell her you do know that's unusual right soak in them those compliments and that's how they got to that whole do this physical intimacy homework um, he also let her know that it's okay to let your wall down. It's okay to be vulnerable. And if you notice, that is the theme with every single relationship. 
every single marriage he told them all it is okay to be vulnerable vulnerability in a marriage is so huge i mean but that comes with trusting someone and knowing and opening your heart and hoping that they're not going to hurt you but vulnerability is a big thing in order to have that uh that emotional intimacy You've got to be vulnerable and you've got to be honest. You've got to be trusting. You've got to be open. Vulnerability, transparent, all of that is important. And so I'm all like, come on and hone it in, Pastor Kyle. Come on, tell them. Like, this is what they need to hear. Let's not bullshit, okay? Now, when they go in, into their new home for um, moving day, I was extremely, like, moved to see. Now, they all made, I guess, it their own, but I was extremely moved to see that she really brought things to make that apartment feel welcoming and home like home the quilt okay we saw the other people had one but we really saw Deanna making it her own space like you know making it comfortable so that to me is a big deal because in order for me to be intimate and vulnerable and comfortable i have to feel comfortable so her putting that quilt down her putting the blessed sign up her taking up all the space in the closet and all the space on top of the dresser really showed that listen this is who i am and i'm coming in i got a lot of shit, but i'm coming and considering greg got all those rooms he could make one of those rooms her dressing room like i've always wanted a full room to be my dressing room like next to my bedroom that I walked through the bathroom into my closet and it was my full-on sitting area to get dressed okay if I ever win some money y'all will see the tour because that is exactly what would be happening like there will be a room the size of this room that will be specifically for my clothes and for me and my sitting area to get dressed with a little lounge chair and a vanity child I got it planned in my mind everybody deserves it everybody deserves it every woman anyway and some men too because they wanted to. So that pretty much ends all the entire episode. Like I'm really hopeful for Deanna and Greg. I mean, I know we were all in agreement. We were all in agreement that they didn't seem like they meshed well, but seeing how they're progressing, seeing how they mesh really well, seeing how they really do kind of have the same values and belief system. I'm really going to start pulling for them. Like I know that we've already, they've already filmed everything, but my prayer baby is that they actually are still together and making it work right now. Like, anyway, um, tell me what you thought about this episode. I'm concerned for Matt and Amber. I mean, especially when we got a sneak peek, I'm truly concerned for Matt and Amber. I'm concerned for Iris and Keith. Iris, it's still has unrealistic expectations and that hubby husband hubby 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 shit is getting on my nerves that alone tells me that her expectations are unrealistic and of course maybe it's something that she saw in her own life like maybe her mom was a tinge off you know we all got a little bit of our mom inside of us okay uh liz and jamie may end up working out but um you know they are different. They have different styles that will need to mesh, right? One is very eclectic, eccentric. The other one is very OCD-ish. So I can't wait to see how they mesh and what happens as time goes on because you remember she's a daddy's girl, so that's coming up. Then we have Deanna and Greg, and I can't wait to see the episode where she looks like I wouldn't be upset if something happened, like her wall has come down. Hello, somebody? I'm excited about it. Listen. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Married at First Sight, season number nine, episode six, Real Life, Real Wife. Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, click the red subscribe button and become a ray of sunshine. You should be clicking the notification bell so you don't miss another video, another review of uh, Married at First Sight. And for me, because you like me and I know it's real, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. It won't hurt much. People might see it on your Twitter account. But guess what? That'll send them over like, who is that girl? What's she talking about? Who's that girl? Whatever. Whatever it is, but just do it because you like me. Like, you know, you, you think I'm cool. You with me. You here again. Go and tell a friend. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next video.